Oh yeah! All right, it's 360 day. Mm -hmm. What's up, YouTube? Look at this. All right, all right, man. It's, it's been a couple on. weeks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we could have had one last week, but I think we worked up until like five oh, no. or six. So. I know. The plan was to come in here, but we just uh, kept working through to power through. Yeah. We had to go back tomorrow, this morning too. I don't know. <laughs> still, All right. So there's so much crazy stuff that's happening. So uh, this is what you can see today. So one, you get to see all my frustration with every ammonia test kit known to man. Uh, I hate them all. I'm going to tell you all about <laughs> it. Uh, I hate uh, nitrate testing too. I uh, hate it even more after today. Oh, and nitrate testing nitrate. even more. Uh, you're gonna hear about that too. Uh, you're gonna hear about that. You're gonna see us build out uh, the system. You can see this light the whole thing up. In it's fact, awesome. Let's go right. I, I got a, you a photo well. of you, or video of you lighting it up. This is a sneak peek, so you get to see before we show you all the photos. Oh yeah, what it looks like. All right, let's do yeah. it. No sound. I'll. I'll. Uh, hey, look at this. We're gonna light it up. I'm doing Boom. the dub over. Uh, that was the sump. That's the sump bottom. There's the sump inside the sump. Boom. Boom. It's come to life. Ecotech board. Da -da -da. RODI board. Neptune board. Wait for it. The oh, dosers. Man. The lights for Ecotech and Neptune. And then the coup de gras. Bam! Bam! I wish I could have like a super high voice and like give the like an opera song. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't got, I can't do it. Oh, All right, so cool. uh, that's a little preview of what you're gonna see. So it's coming together. You can see, man, we finally got all the stuff lighted. I mean, it's so hard. You're going through the wall Holy and like cow. round cords and hanging everything. Good. So luckily, uh, there I, I don't know how he does it, but Kyle has put the right length on everything that's way up high, the mm -hmm. right length on cords for everything else, and it, it actually looked, worked out really well. Okay, you know how he did it? You, did you tell him? Well, I gave him a the graph dimension. of my wall. Oh, uh, yeah. I told, showed him where everything was, and then instead of just winging it, uh, he actually CAD designs it out. Smart. Lo and behold, it works. Smart. All right, so, <laughs> yeah, okay. So you're gonna see all of that. You're gonna see uh, how it all worked out, uh, and you're gonna see uh, the progression of how we in installed all that stuff. You're mm -hmm. gonna see some of the challenges we had. But I gotta tell you, so one of the first things, everybody's waiting for fish, right? I, I, I hope so, anyway. Yeah, I me too. Uh, and I, I think maybe they're gonna ship either today or tomorrow, because the tank's finally cycled. But uh, here's the thing, man. Yeah. I, I, I want everybody out there to raise your hand if you actually monitor ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, and follow the whole cycle through and mm. like, because uh, uh, I don't. Uh, can I say that I have? Not, I mean, I, when I, I think I did the, uh, uh, the ammonia, following ammonia one time, my very first tank, because I read that I needed to follow it, had my little API tester kit out there, and uh, that's the last time I ever owned an ammonia kit. All right. I just let it go now for like three months and then start doing something with it. I don't know if I should say this out <laughs> loud or not. I, I guess I've probably already said it many times, but like when I started reefing, the first thing I did, I got all my rock uh, from TBS Aquatics, mm -hmm. or not TBS, because we got T, Tampa Bay Saltwater. The live, uh, live, yeah, live rock. rock. Yeah. Tampa Bay Saltwater. I, I got it from them. They shipped it in water. I put it in the tank, and you know it was like roughly cycled because it came out of the ocean. You know. Yeah. Uh, shipped in water, airport to airport. And uh, it was really cool, but I did, I got a cycle and I monitored ammonia. I got really freaked out about it. I, <laughs> like I was reading all this stuff. I thought my like cycle got stalled for some reason. Yeah. You know, this is 15 years ago. So I, you know, oh, emailed yeah. them. They told me I was being high and uh, <laughs> like waited you, out, you man. Like, oh, every no, day. No, you don't understand this guy in the forum told me. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, I tested nitrate and then I watched this thing go through and it was just like, all right, man. Finally, I got to the other side of it and they yeah. got fish. It was like two months, man. I'm like, I don't know. Okay, I can't remember exactly where it deviated from there, but eventually I tried out like a Dr. Tim's, you know, or no, no, it was Biospira. Bio, Biospira. Yeah, yeah Biospira. Bio yep. Put through two clownfish in and. Uh, Everything was good. Yeah, I don't know. I came back a week later, there was no ammonia. <laughs> I don't know. It was like, it, I don't know. Since then, I don't think I've ever lost a fish uh, during a cycle. No. Uh, I, I can't imagine. I if I know. did, it was because they were sick, but I can't even think of that one. That first tank, when you go, go through that whole process, the first tank, and you're reading, I, my, I, I'm experiencing this, experiencing this with my mom who set up a saltwater tank in uh, Montana. I'm flying over there in a couple weeks to set up, but she's going through the same thing too. I was just on the phone with her and she's like, oh, you, ammonia and uh, like the nitrite, nitrite. And I, 
I'm trying to get her on that like verge, but she's so ex you're, you're, you get so excited about that. You know, I can't wait for my first fish and the whole process and the this and the that. And uh, so, like me, I was in the same boat. I'm testing pneumonia every single day, waiting for this thing to drop, hoping something happens, uh, and wondering like, why did I not see nitrate? I never tested any nitrate or yeah, nitrites. I never mm -hmm. tested any nitrates. What, what's going on? Why isn't there something wrong? I'm on the forums asking those questions. Like, I don't test anything. It's been so many weeks. There's been so many so days. Irritating. And like, uh, you get excited about it, and then after that, uh, it's just it's not a thing for me anymore. All right. So here's the deal. Yeah. Like, I never bought another nitrite test kit because A, I found out, mm. or I don't know, the people that I trust anyway yeah. told me that nitrite doesn't matter anyway. Maybe at some level, uh, theoretical super high level yeah, it but does. It's so but short of a yeah, window. Like, uh, the nitrite just doesn't even, isn't even toxic to fish in salt mm. water. Uh, I don't know. I think it was Randy Holmes Farley's article, mm. article that I read on that, and I was like, oh, well, why am I buying this test kit then? <laughs> uh, because you're going to use it during the cycle, and then it's just going to rot on your shelf. You should probably throw it away the day the cycle's done, because by the time you want to cycle another tank, it's expired for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, true. So I don't know. Okay, so here's the thing. This time, I really wanted to take it to the next level. This is like dream tank stuff mm -hmm. and like, I don't know. I just like, we're also cycling tanks here, you know, using the Senai's yeah. and like we got this experiment. By the way, uh, check out uh, my, my Facebook channel today because we, I got like unbelievable update. Like an update that even I don't even believe. <laughs> uh, dude, I, I, don't, I tried to upload it yesterday and I left here and it got stuck at 90%. So I, you definitely want to go over to Beers TV Guy and check it out because it was really crazy. But Here's the thing, man. You got all this stuff going on, and I just want to up the game on the uh, ammonia test. Hmm. And all I did was get immensely frustrated. Oh, uh, by monitoring and following ammonia? Yeah, well, let's see the first slide here. So the first slide is monitoring ammonia. And I'd never actually monitored ammonia using the Senai during the cycle. I understand the pitch that you can use the Senai here to like monitor it, like if something dies in your tank, the, it'll monitor yeah. the free ammonia and tell you that uh, like right. the fish died, you should do something about it. Okay, so here's the thing. I thought that uh, you can use it to cycle the tank as well. So I thought that you could use it to cycle the tank and monitor ammonia, but you can't really. I don't no. know, I, I don't know, maybe you can, but mm. I, I couldn't. So there's two things in ammonia. There's one thing is called free ammonia, mm -hmm. and the other one uh, is uh, like ammonium, which is like a salt, yeah. right? Free ammonia is ammonia gas and super toxic. Right. Ammonium is really not toxic at all, mm. right? At a pH of 7.8, which was my tank, mm -hmm. it, there is almost no ammonia gas no matter what, right? Oh, like yeah. it's all in the ammonia salt. At a pH of 8.3, there's actually a lot of it. It changes a lot in this little in tiny that, window. In right? that window where we say is normal fluctuations for your tank. Yeah, so if you look at the, the graph here, uh, back at the Senna again, like a lot of this was in the safe range, but it, you look at the safe range down there, like, oh, I made it back down to green at some point. Yeah. Right? Oh, it might, must be good. No, ammonia <laughs> level was actually over one part per million. Oh. But uh, your pH wasn't allowing this to read correctly. Yeah, because, so here's the thing is, the Senai's reading the free ammonia, which is the toxic part and the part that you actually want to read, but because my pH was so low, because I don't have any lights or anything on in the tank, uh, like it's only, it's not really reading anything. So here's the conundrum. The conundrum is, is the Senai was reading it right. Mm -hmm. But what if I told you you had one part per million ammonia? Would you put fish in there even if there was no toxic ammonia or very little? The answer is no. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> so wait so for zero. I've been this told tool was telling me the tank is safe, and theoretically, it probably is. Mm. But uh, at the same time, like it's got one part per million ammonia. I don't know. I, I, it's like frustrating, right? So it's not the accurate tool that you were hoping it would be for that purpose, but there's probably some reasons behind it, right? It's doing some calculations in the background, it's doing... No, it's accurate. It is It is accurate. It's telling you, it's mm. reading the 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 uh, to, uh, free ammonia. It's reading yeah. it really low, but because my pH is so low, like the um, ammonia is mm. actually really high. So maybe you don't care because it's not the toxic portion of it. But still, nobody would do that. <laughs> nobody would do that knowing you got one part per million ammonia and dump and fish in there. That's insane. Yeah. But this tool would tell me that it's okay. Now, the problem then is like, can I use this to cycle a tank? And the reality is, is most of you out there who are cycling a tank 
have the lights off, meaning the pH is actually going to be closer to that 7.8 oh, range yeah. in many households where people are breathing and whatnot. If you had the lights on and it would go back up uh, to about 8 or even higher, mm -hmm. it would have read the ammonia as toxic and it would have been right. So I don't know, man. I got, I got really frustrated with it. So also it read... Like, I don't know, the whole thing was super fun. So you're in lieu of that, you're just testing with off the side with something else, with a te test kit. Yeah, so not the blue one, but the next one here. So I tried this guy too. Oh yeah. Actually, the problem is the same because mm. it reads free ammonia, right? And this is that little tab that everybody uses for uh, you know protecting their QT fish. QT tanks during and stuff like that. Tanks. Yeah. And I think it's actually accurate. Like it's telling you it's safe in, in that range there. Uh, however, well, that thing is telling me it's safe because my pH is low, I actually still have one part per million ammonia in my tank. Ah, that's interesting. And I'm boring everybody to death with ammonia top here. <laughs> but, like, I, I don't know, man. I was just super frustrated by it. But and eventually, I just said, you know what? I'm going back to the tri tried and true. I'm going back to my Red Sea te test kit yeah. here. Do a regular test kit and... You know, for a while, I could, I could read the, the one and a half or 1.2 and the two mm. uh, really easy. And then, like, I got to here, and this looks like zero, looks but like I'm zero not like 100% sure because it never really got all the way green. Yeah. Or, uh, like, Yellow. I, yeah. In the end, I kind of wish that I'd just done what I'd normally do, which is like not pour fuss the bacteria over it. in, uh, <laughs> not, not purposely dose. I mean, because the one part per million ammonia I had in there is because I tried to go cycle the tank and just dump the ammonia in. Yeah. And then I'm trying to like cycle it, make sure. But you know what? Here's the here's the thing. It's like we got this cycle test going on here. Yes, six tanks. How much ammonia does two fish add to forty gallons of water? Oh, two small little clownfish too. The answer is like an infinitesimal amount. It's very very little. Right. And it actually takes a long time to get grow uh, to increase. So now, what if I take those two same small fish and I put them in three hundred and sixty gallons? Zero. It would take an eternity uh, for the the like uh, the ammonia to go back up. Yeah. Like, it will cycle on its own by the time that ever happens. <laughs> so I, I don't know. So I'm not going to ever tell anybody to not go buy an ammonia test kit. Yeah. Don't not buy your nitrite test kit. I'm only I can only share you my own personal experience. This was garbage. So I, I wasted a lot of time and a lot of effort, and I just wanted to bash my head against so the wall. So the net result, you would say, is do the like ammonia test or do the ghost feeding thing like you normally would, add in uh, bigger fish or more fish, uh, and then just run with it? No, I think what I do is I just normally I dump in my bacteria, I dump in my fish, and then the best thing I could probably do is use my uh, uh, test kit from Red Sea that was the easiest, uh, and yeah. it gave me the, the information I want to know, I don't have to extrapolate out uh, yeah. the, I just, I just know I want no ammonia. I don't need to do the, math, the rest of the math. Yeah, I know yeah, yeah. that the toxic portion of it, but I want none. So it doesn't really matter to me. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, I don't know. That's what I would do. I would just, uh, I'd follow that. <laughs> I, I, I would waste a lot of time here. So Ammonia, off the table. It's ready for fish. Yeah, you know what though, I'm telling you, go watch this video. I'm gonna upload it the, so the minute this is done. Because you're going to be boggle the mind at what you saw. We got six tanks cycling back here. Yeah. You will not believe what we saw in that one as well. I I, I don't even know what to say. So uh, <laughs> I we're haven't gonna even go seen on. it yet. Uh, I know it's crazy. I was so mad that it didn't upload yesterday. Oh. I got home and I'm like, what what happened? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next one. Oh well, that one comes was going to come later. But uh, heads up. Uh, 8.8 .8 alkalinity. We'll come up to talk about that one later. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, this is our out of oh, also nitrate. This is, I did test it. I brought home this checker. Uh, I had a nitrite, yeah. Nitrite, 200. Uh, so at the time, it's not 200 anymore. That's parts per billion, too. Yeah, so it's like two parts, two parts uh, uh, per nitrite. I thought I'd follow this along. A giant pain in the butt, mm. but like not worth it for me. Yeah. I, don't, I, I can't wait to come back and read the comments here, see if people agree with this stuff or not, uh, and, and their, their process. All right, so moving past my cycle worries, <laughs> it's like tank is cycled now. Uh, Elliot is sending me some fish. The like boat is moving forward. Oh, and I missed the photo. I'm gonna share that photo later too. What's that? Uh, I got a photo of the hood. Oh, Chris yeah. Benner. Chris, yeah. he's, he's like staining it right now. So the hood is designed, it's shipping. It's probably gonna ship next week. That means lights, lights are, are coming. coming. Up. This tank's like it's had ready. water in it forever. Boat's moving forward. <laughs> uh, all right, Sweet. finally. 
All right. So uh, in terms of uh, going right there, so we decided to move forward on the on the uh, the wall. We came over yeah. yet last week, spent the whole day on it. I mean, the last time you guys saw this uh, the update, we had the boards on the wall. You saw the apex on the wall, but I mean, nothing was really finalized and whatnot. There was no lights on there. It, it was supposed to look a heck of a lot better, and last week and this week, we finally got it that way. Yeah, so the, one of the first things we did is uh, start cutting the wall, wall apart again. <laughs> the cool thing about these adaptive reef boards, and this is like uh, this is like Kyle's large adaptive reef board that we actually have, you know, you can get it uh, here on the website. Uh, but the cool thing about these adaptive reef boards is they have this uh, this inner shell and an outer like cover for it. So here, this the shell is up against the wall. We're cutting through that you know expanded PVC. Uh, but when you when you see the end of this, what this board looks like well, after these challenges, uh, it leaves room for drivers and for extension cords, and mm -hmm. uh, it's you can take out some of the thing. You can kind of see the side of this thing here, how it's got some vent holes and whatnot. You can take those out if you have a lot of electronics in there and need to vent some heat out. These things are awesome. Yeah, all right. so we're cutting out the back of the wall so we can send all the cords through the back of the wall yeah. and have it come out into the sump. Down here. into the stand. Uh, so just for a reference point, uh, the boards that we're, we're using here, like they obviously are a little bit customized to our specific they got some purpose lights here. And some things, yeah. uh, but uh, I, I think Kyle's actually working on making some for us so oh. that you guys can have them because I don't think they're like going to be tremendously expensive. Well, and like one of the things you can see here. Yeah. Is this is what kind of makes the room like really awesome? Right? Like, <laughs> Heck yeah. I don't know. And he'll have some pieces. I think you can swap them out, whatever. But right now, as it exists, you can get these boards. I think they're called like deluxe controller boards, yeah. and you can do this at home too. So. I, if if I had a fish room like this that was all decked out, you know, I would get out of my garage and migrate down to my fish room, and that's where I would have the TV with my beer, with my tank <laughs> up, and just watch in the place. There it's a go. hangout. It makes it a hangout. It is. It was you really know, cool. I was thinking about, like, uh, could you incorporate the garage and the fish room and get the exact same thing you were just Heck talking yeah. about? I was just thinking about that the other day. All right, all right, but, like, upstairs all in one. All right, so then now we've got the whole cut out here. Uh, it turned out really easy. That expanded PVC is so easy to work with. It was super easy to cut out. And so what I did is I fished a piece of RO tubing up through the wall, through mm -hmm. the bottom, into the sump, and then we started taping cords to it and pulling them through. One at a time. There's so a bunch of cords coming That's the best there. advice I can give you is if you're going to fish stuff through, get a string or a cord yeah. or something to go through so you can fish it all the way up, fish it all the way down. <laughs> and give yourself some slack so you don't pull it all yeah. the way through. You do have a roll of fish tape, and it's like a uh, long metal, almost like a coat hanger, mm -hmm. and yep. that could work too, but the RODI worked in a pinch. Yeah, I mean, or you could use string, whatever. Yeah. I mean, because it's BRS, we use RO tubing. Uh, I don't know, I guess <laughs> we, we have a lot around. of it laying around. All right, so this is what the back of that board looks like. We yeah. got tons and tons of lighting. Yeah, so you see the power strip here, you see the four bricks for the MP60s, you see another brick hidden behind some cords, that's for some of the lighting, uh, but the power strip inside of here, could, good thing about the power strip is all of the backlight of the, like the dosing and the backlight of the Neptune board and the, R and the Ecotech board, uh, they don't take very much wattage and the cords are actually kind of short. So you run a long extension cord up and plug that extension cord into the uh, EB832, and now I can have all my lights, my cool lights, on one switch, which will help in the long run when we go to program the apex on your doorway, when you open the door and all this stuff turns on. All right, so we screw that thing onto the wall, and uh, you can see all these cords that are coming out of the wall. We fished tons and tons and tons of cords down the wall, and uh, this takes more time than you think <laughs> it does. Uh, but yeah, so that's uh, the assembly is starting to come together. Uh, and then uh, where's the next one? All right. So we also built an RO system. Oh, you yeah. You know, as you can see the backlit now. Uh, actually, we turned on one of the backlights uh, already here. Yep, that's one of them. Uh, the RO system I'm going to get to a little bit later. But you'll notice that the only thing that's on this thing is one DI can and one RO membrane. And that's pretty, it. Pretty, pretty thin on yeah. that RODI system. So why is that? I'll share it later. So I'll hold in with us. Uh, we'll, we'll show it a little bit. I got a closer shot of it. That's why I'll explain it later. But so we built that out. This is something I want to improve upon. So I'll be curious to see what people say. Yeah. Uh, we also uh, increased or, or swapped out the dosing vessels. So there they are in all their now glory. we don't have a broken one. Of one of them isn't shattered. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. But it's cool because Kyle built the shelf for these things. The bar underneath that's red, he put the red LEDs in that. And then the Royal Exclusive Dosing Reservoirs have the red lights underneath of them. Uh, so uh, all you have to do is run the little light tube through there. And that's the question that we had after seeing this. Will the liquid inside glow red? I don't I know. Mean, like, I'm it's partially liquid. no, but I can't wait to see. I, I don't know. I'm interested to find out. So there, yeah, there's a red bar on the bottom, and then there's also a red LED. But actually, the LEDs that are in there, they can glow red, blue, green, oh, yeah, or right. even like disco, you can disco uh, for Christmas if you or whatnot. You want it to. Yeah, uh, all right. So that's what the dosing vessels now look like. And I got four of them. So here, let's come back here. So the, the four of them, the reason that I, I have four, and there's a, there's a couple of different things that I, I'm not sure I'm gonna do with it. So first option is I'm, I'm, I'm definitely gonna do the like hybrid method uh, of uh, Tropic oh. Marin's uh, like trace elements and part C. With our pharma. Yep, okay, so here's the thing. I got calcium, alkalinity, and part C in there, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and I can also do magnesium if I want it. Right. right? Oh, uh, that's four. That's four, and I'm done, right? Mm -hmm. Or I could make the calcium double strong, right? Oh, okay. And do two alkalinities, which means uh, you can't make the alkalinity double strong, but the calcium you can. Right. That means that I don't Twice have to change it out as often, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. uh, then the third one, yeah, part C. And then part C, the part C you will have to replace more often, even in that case, but like at least it's only one of them. Yeah. So I can't really decide the value of two alkalinities changing it out mm -hmm. or, you know, doing the magnesium. Oh. Okay, and so here's one of the things about you the magnesium. hand dose magnesium, that's pretty easy, right? So the magnesium one is interesting. Right? Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the recipe for the BRS2 part is every time you finish a gallon of calcium and alkalinity, go and get 20 ounces, mm. uh, make the solution and dump it in, right? Right. That uh, comes in a lot of, you can get a little tear strips or you yeah. can like get a gallon mm -hmm. of it or, or whatnot. Uh, and I like, you know, <sighs> some people dose it and I just found that what I really did it was just test magnesium, you know. And then correct it. And when then correct it. Yeah. Use the calculator and correct it. I didn't actually follow the recipe all the time. Yeah, you know, so, I agree. I did the same thing. Yeah, I think that's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, raise your hand if you follow the 20 ounce thing. I, uh, I finished uh, this good one. Now I'm going to dump in the. Yeah, I like, actually didn't even know yeah. that until I got here. And I was using two part a long time ago, just corrective dosing. My suspicion is very few people are doing gallon, gallon, then 20 ounces, gallon, gallon, then 20 ounces, mm. the way it's supposed to. So I think most people are probably just testing uh, magnesium. When it drops a little bit, mm -hmm. correct it, use a calculator, super easy. I agree. But, you know, there's, like, part of the reason they use 20 ounces is because you, you can make the magnesium like super dense, yeah. uh, or concentrated rather. I could also take that little pouch and just dilute it in a gallon of water and have it dose uh, equal the amounts amount. uh, mm -hmm. along with the rest. And I might just do that. Okay. You know, it wouldn't like it won't be the most concentrated thing, but I'm actually dosing now the magnesium daily at a regular level. Uh, that I don't have to do the math to try to figure out how to get from 20 ounces to a gallon of concentration. Mm -hmm. I can actually just dissolve the 20 ounce portion in a gallon of water. Yeah. Instead of 20 it's, ounces. It's the same. Yeah. Yep. I think I might do that. And so I'm not really sure which one of those things, but that's why there's uh, four dosing vessels there. And part of me kind of wishes now that there was like seven. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. We'll see where it goes. Uh, all right. So uh, uh, let's see the next photo here. Um, oh, yeah. We were installing the wood brick, okay, the first one. So we got uh, Mr. Chili that we need to install. Yep. There we go. So Mr. Chili needs to be installed, and he needs to come off the wall a little bit because we didn't plan for that outlet we did that's not. up there. <laughs> We didn't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so uh, when I drew up this, the plans for him, that outlet didn't exist. There. And he fit perfectly. You know, kudos to Kyle because it was exactly the way it was it should have been, except for no outlet accounted for. So turns out I want to use that outlet because there's a computer and a monitor and a bunch of other stuff up there but that you doesn't. Don't need, yeah, it doesn't need to be hooked up to an apex. Yeah, true. All right, so we built it off of the wall, screwed it into the studs, and uh, took it two pieces of two by four, took it off the wall. And this is what it looks like when we're done. So there's Mr. Chili now pushed out uh, off of the wall. Yeah. He's mounted up there. Oh, uh, he's a, removable. This next one's a good one. 
uh, and you can you know see the adaptive reef is being installed mm -hmm. as well so that by the way adaptive reef is who made a lot of uh, what you see here they also provided a lot of information on how to use the uh, like uh, expanded PVC and oh, the yeah. walls. Oh yeah, use some liquid nails and use some know. sticky strips and uh, all of it worked. Kyle, actually, I, I met him at a trade show. Like uh, I don't know, it must have been a couple of years ago. Yeah, I uh, remember. The, uh, I remember that one. You know, like first thing I, I got, I was like, oh, this guy's crazy smart. <laughs> uh, and uh, and even after like eight beers, he was still crazy smart. <laughs> I, I don't know. So uh, I, I I met him there, and then. I've had phone calls with him mm -hmm. ever since, and then he's aggressive. Oh, right. Yeah. So I, mem I remember meeting him at the trade show. We were it was like or it was Orlando, and he was kind of hanging around trying to talk with us, trying to talk with you. Uh, and then you said you told him at that trade show, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. If you, you want my team to look at something, send a, send it. And Kyle took full advantage of that and started sending pallets of things, control boards, and the light up Mr. Chili giant that's Mr. in Chili. our entryway, and yeah. this big giant, I mean, everything was Mr. Chili, everything. It was really cool. Okay, it's so one of my favorite things. So he just sent, sent, sent stuff until finally, like, we relent. Like, okay, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know who, I'll do who is this guy, you know? <laughs> But it turned right. out really good. So here's the thing. Then, actually, one time, man, like, I was talking to him about a skimmer, you know, idea I had in my head. Oh, yeah. Before I know it, you know, like, he's sending me CAD designs for it, like, an hour later. Yeah. And, and then I was telling him the story about, like, wow, how cool that is, is because uh, there's this, like, George S. Patton quote. Uh, that's oh, yeah. It's like, uh, a good plan executed today will beat a perfect plan next week every time. Yeah. Something along, Some that, along like, those lines. Uh, and then before I know it... I've got two 20-foot banners that are supposed to be on my wall on my doorstep here that oh, he yeah. just printed out for me because this dude lives sticker. and breathes that. So I, I just kudos to him because a lot of what you're seeing today is uh, a lot of Kyle's effort. And mm. uh, I don't know. I now consider Kyle like a close friend. Fast, I talk fast, to him on the phone all the yep. time and uh, super smart, really intelligent guy. I really like talking to him. All right. So now you'll see the next one. That's Mr. Chili. You can see a little bit of the background. You can see the Neptune lit up here. You can see the control board that were there. And, you know, this is the RO system. So what you're going to see here is two things. Mm. Or actually, you can see a few different things mounted on this board. Yep. And, and I want to improve this board. This one's going to go somewhere. It's not there yet. But it's, all it is is an RO membrane, uh, DI canister. You can see the RO water controller on the bottom from Tunes. You can see uh, what I use as a keyboard for the uh, touch screen. It, yeah. Like sometimes there's just uh, some stuff you just want to type in like oh, lo yeah. longer than you would want to type in a touch finger, screen. Yeah. So it's nice to have that there. It's kind of like having a mouse close. And your TDS meter. All right, so here's Pretty the deal. Pretty empty. Uh, this is why there's only an RO membrane and a TDS mm -hmm. meter is because I have a commercial whole house RO, meaning all the water in the whole house is mm -hmm. RO because my water is terrible. You probably listened to that pitch a lot. Well, yeah, I think it was like four or five episodes back we mm -hmm. talked about. You saw pictures, yeah. Okay, so what happens though is it gets all the way from like six, almost like 570 TDS, and it gets all the way down to one or two actually, yeah. which is really impressive for this thing. But yeah. it runs at like 150 psi. It goes in, uh, however, it turns out that RO water is terrible for your house, your plumbing and everything, mm. right? If it's down that cheap or low. So they pump it through calcite to like remineralize it uh, back into the house. Yeah. And now it's like 50 TDS water. Oh. Okay, so it's just calcite. Not, so I'm not like super concerned about it. Yeah. But I also don't know the grade of calcite they're using. <laughs> and it's, uh, I, I don't know. Like, I have no idea if this is how like reef, reef safe is or not. So I'm not going to like use that out of the tap. 50 yeah. TS calcite water. So, but I also, the stuff is already run through two giant carbon block towers. Yeah. It's already run through a commercial RO system. It's already run through a water softener. It's already run through a UV. Yeah, so like, why would you yeah. go through sediment and carbon and, you know, tr three stages of DI again? Yeah, why am I going to have a whole RO system in that room? That, yep. that RO system is just for top off, by the way. Mm. So why would I put a sediment filter there again? It doesn't make any sense. Yep. Why would I put more carbon blocks in there? Uh, it just doesn't make any sense. Yep. Right? And so I got an RO membrane. The water's already pre-filtered at that point. And then I was going to put in the triple DI, you know, yeah. the triple threat, you know, like, because so why not? Because and we already have it there. <laughs> Actually, it's still it was sitting on the yeah. floor. But the problem was, is after running for like a month and a half, Nothing. I haven't used any of it. <laughs> no. Yeah, because so, the 50 TS water, uh, with, after the RO membrane, comes out zero. Like zero or one, yeah. And it's like a real zero because we have commercial RO'd it, and now we're like home RO'd it. 
it's just a waste. So yeah. I'm gonna use something else on that board because that's the only thing I need. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. So I'll, all I got there is some TDS uh, or uh, DI resin, by the way, which is still not consumed at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got a TDS meter, but I also have the RO controller. So m many of you probably have no idea what this is. Oh, can you go back cool. to that photo? Yeah, this one right here. So that's RO water controller. Maybe you guys can tell, or you can tell them what they do. What well, this is pretty interesting in that, okay, so we all, you, you've probably heard us talk about like TDS creep, and even even you have probably turned on your T or your RO member, or your RO, uh, RODI system, and watched the TDS meter and see how it's like, you know, 50, 60, 100, whatever. But then we always say, you know, take your real readings like five, 10, 15 minutes later after it's had time to settle out. Well, you've got a bunch of high TDS just kind of sitting in there. And if you have your RO hooked straight up to a, just a flow valve, anytime the flow goes down, it fills back up. It goes back down, fills back up. So you can have a shot of like high TDS every time. So rather what we'd want to do is drain the whole ATO reservoir down and then fill it all at once so there's not just high TDS, high TDS, high TDS, it's filtered the whole way up. I got a different problem though. Like, uh, cause I don't, TDS isn't my issue. Yes. Right? That's the reason that almost all of you would use it. Yeah. Right, I, uh, however, I got a different problem in my house. Mm. I've never encountered before. And, <laughs> and I, I can't explain it all the way. Uh, I got some suspicions as to what's causing it, yeah. but it really sucks actually. So, I mean, I, the amount of problems I had with my water in my house, it's like, I should move. Uh, so <laughs> here's the problem, is uh, the thing is super loud. Um, yeah. That auto shut off valve. Okay, I mean, I'm telling you, I can hear it in my kid's room, two floors up. <clears throat> like, what? Hey. Yeah. And so, you know, what it is, is there's air getting trapped somewhere in between the check valve yeah. and uh, the auto shut off valve. And yeah. like you can shake it, and yeah. then the air will get out, and it will stop doing it. But it's having like some kind of pressure or equilibrium uh, issue with uh, some gas stuck in there, right? And I'm like, all right, so I just you know things that we you know do to troubleshoot these things, you shake it and like get the turn air it on and it. get the air yeah. out, and it stops doing it. And then a week later, it starts doing it again, right? And I'm like, oh god. You even so, upgraded. You even yeah. went and upgraded to uh, auto shut off valve that we don't carry. I went to one of our suppliers and I'm like, hey, I'm like, I want the best auto shut off valve you got, right? And it was like 15 bucks. Yeah. And uh, I put that thing on there. It was actually worse. You know? Yeah. Uh, and like, <laughs> my wife is super pissed. My kid is waking up because the thing's going off. And at first it was only, only going off for like a one minute. Mm, right? like, yeah. Okay, well, anyway. So the thing makes a ton of noise. And mm. I think this is what's happening because I have well water and it's doing all this stuff. There must be some kind of like gas like in my water that's like just, just kinda, a bubble kind of gets through. When it turns off, it's like getting through mm. somehow. I, I, I don't know, man, because I can get it out and then it comes back yeah. somehow. Well, then, then therein lies your the reason for your RO controller yep. is rather than uh, 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 every time that that flow valve went down and it filled it back up, mm -hmm. now it can it'll drain all the way down to the bottom. And then maybe if it has to make a noise, go all the way up. But it, in it the new actually, setup, we didn't even use it. Yeah, it won't actually make any noise because uh, uh, if you look at this, there's that float valve and there's a high and a low oh, float yeah. sensor, right? And, and the, the high and the low float sensor here means that it will never hit the float valve. Yeah. So there's a solenoid that shuts off the feed to the, the whole RO. system. Yeah. yeah, so it's not the float valve holding back the pressure where it's putting pressure on the outer shutoff. It's the water source is completely shut off, so there is no pressure in the unit. Yeah, so I just shut off the whole unit prior to the whole unit using the solenoid on the Tunes water controller. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know, uh, like different tool, different purpose, uh, right application for me. <laughs> and then, um, we turn the, then we turn your RO into a bare bones skeleton anyway. Yeah, so I don't know. I, for me, I, I, well, we had to do that actually. It's a long story, but yeah, yeah so for me, I, I have a really bare bones uh, RO system. It's all that was required. I could have put a bunch more stuff on there, but uh, I just can't give you a justification as to why I'd maintain more garbage uh, for no reason. Yeah. I've already solved my problem. And the RO uh, water controller, uh, ultimately, uh, I just need to not wake up my kids all night long. <laughs> uh, waking up two and four year olds, I, like, is not good for my marriage. <laughs> uh, all right, so next one. 
All right, so we've now installed quite a bit of this stuff. You can see Mr. Chili there. You can see the adaptive reef. You can see Neptune's uh, lit board up. lit up, the control, the heart of my system. It's all kind of interlinked through there. You're going to start to see us program it pretty soon. Uh, I got actually a whole bunch of accessories I need to install because so they're not installed yet. There's a gap there you know, oh. below the MP60s. Where, what are you going to put there? Uh, uh, well, so here, here's the thing. Uh, I don't know yet. I got two options, uh, and I'm, I'm curious what the, the community watching here uh, thinks, but yeah. I got two options I can put in there. I was going to put the battery back up mm. for the power heads, right? Yeah. And you know, you might say, well, hey, don't you have a whole house judge or electric generator now installed for this project? I'm like, yeah, I do. But that doesn't mean that like a breaker can't get tripped or something oh, yeah. else, you know. So That's I still true. want to, to put the battery back up in there. There's going to be some really really cool fish that are going in there, and the hundred and fifty dollars on the battery happen. backup is irrelevant to these fish. Mm -hmm. So I, I really want to protect them. I want them to be around for a really long time. So there's going to be there could be a battery backup up there, or if you go back to it, uh, one of the things that could be there is a trident too. So I haven't decided oh, yeah. where to put the, the Neptune trident. You know, I'm, I'm definitely gonna it have to go there real time, you know, magnesium, calcium, alkalinity testing. Cause there's also not, room over there on the RO board. There, there kind of was, uh, if you, I mean, we'll see that in another photo here, but like, I, I just haven't decided where to put the, the trident yet. So it might go there. I'm gonna have to look at where the wires go and like how, how to run the tubes and stuff yeah. as well. But so one of two things is gonna go in that open space is that, that nice battery backup from Ecotech uh, or uh, the trident. So, mm. all right. So let's see. Brightwell is uh, was asking. I hope there's a plan for that ATO container oh, somewhere yeah. to put it. So yeah, I don't know. I, like we, I, it definitely doesn't belong on the floor wherever it, where it is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's too big to fit underneath yeah. the sink with that P trap down there uh, because that's a 10 gallon reservoir, so it's not your skinny one. Mm -hmm. uh, so you might have to get a DIY one that just slides right in there flush or. Yeah, I might have to make one or get one that slides in underneath Somebody that sink all the way. This one. one is too wide. Yeah, uh, I don't really need it to be as big as it is because uh, it just automatically fills uh, and rises and lowers. Uh, as long as uh, you remember to turn the water on. Yeah, I actually, it went last night. It was bubbles in the tank because <laughs> when we built this, we I were, forgot to turn the water yeah, on. <laughs> for a week. It was without ATO. Well, that slowly went down. I uh, now found out though the tank will run without uh, top off for a week. Oh, yeah. Uh, or like, yeah, six days. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's not find that out again. Optical sensors on the Neptune next time. Yeah, so I walk down there, bubbles all over. Uh, all right, so the next shot here, uh, you can see that we could put that trident over there underneath the RO system or just like reconfigure the RO system, put mm -hmm. it over there as well. I'm not really sure what we're going to do, but we'll see that. That Pax Bellum looks pretty cool there. Uh, the, yeah, God, I don't know, the whole thing, man, is just uh, really coming together for me. I, I, like today when we turned on those lights, I'm like, oh. Man, the dream is materializing, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is another good shot here, too. Yeah, like, you're just like, ah. Oh. It's like That's the cool. toy wall, you know? Yeah. Uh, and for me, it's really fun to, like, see the different kind of brands there. You know, like, like it's like hot, tricking out your hot rod car, you know? Like, yeah. You see the little nitro sticker <laughs> on the side or whatever it is. Uh, I don't know, man. That's and, sweet. And I can't help it. I just like seeing Mr. Chili everywhere. I can. Yeah, there's a little one there. A, there's a big one. Part there. of heart and soul of the whole thing. So, <laughs> uh, we asked somebody asked earlier or asked Adam what Mr. Chili is. Is he like a specific type of coral polyp? I don't know. Where'd you get him from? I, well, so you know where I got him from is a buddy of mine said, "Hey, I got a friend that's like uh, she's like 19 and she's doing you know design for her logos or whatever." And like. Oh sweet! I'll give her a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, and give me a give some, me give me some for reef chili. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's where he exists from reef chili. Is he a specific type of coral polyp? Could be I something just hanging off an SPS. He's just like whatever you want. Tenuous. Yeah, he's yeah. A near and dear to your heart to whatever you want, Mr. Chili to be. That's what he is. Oh. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> so uh, the uh, next shot here, you can start to see the sink and how this all comes together. What this room desperately needs, though, mm. is a working surface because oh, yeah. we keep using the sump as a working surface, it's a and it is idea. too beautiful for that. Terrible <laughs> idea. Uh, we also got to get a cutout to, to go around that Pax Bellum over there. We got to get that plumbed in. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Actually, a friend of mine asked me today a really interesting question. You know, he's like, "All right, so you're going to see that we still have we have nitrate and phosphate in this tank. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to share some testing results with you guys in just a minute." And it's like, well, are you gonna do a water change, you know, before you, you know, start the tank? And they're like, well, yeah, but like the 
you know, nitrates like four. Yeah. You do a 24% water, 5% water change and make it three. Three point something. Would, would that matter? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, even, even if it was 20, 25% water change, it would bring it down to what, 15? Yeah. Is there like a fundamental difference in there that like uh, somehow is going to change the trajectory of the tank? I don't think so. So like some of that advice, like when you're done cycling, do, do a water change, sounds good. Yeah. But why? I don't know. Yeah. So one of the things I thought about is like, well, maybe I'll just turn on the the Pax Bellum for a while and get the nutrients back down. Could just Cato Morpha. Yeah. I've got tons of it here. I gotta find a source you that I'm happy find with. Find a good but source. I don't know. You know, one of the things actually that we started playing around with. Uh, I read this online. We we tried to get a clean source of Cato. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing I read was throw it in the fridge overnight. I'm like, mm. oh. Well, I mean, there's a lot of organisms like Aptasia that probably ain't going to make it Don't overnight. Don't survive right? those 40 yeah. degrees, 50 degrees. Yeah. Another one was uh, soak it in fresh water No, overnight. don't do that. I've made that mistake. Well, we actually did that here. There's a test here. There's, did that and it made it through. I've done, I, for how long? Because I, I pulled a chunk out of the 160 and I was threw it in a, uh, like we were doing a uh, shoot. And I was like, here, just throw some fresh water in there, throw some Kato in there, we'll make it look like it is. And when it came out, when that the ball of Kato came out, it was disintegrating in my hands because it was in fresh water. Crazy. Because we actually did it the other day. Yeah. We soaked it overnight in fresh water, and all the bristle worms and all the other stuff mm. that you had in there were dead. Like, you would assume they would be. Like, I don't A, know. it was like room temperature water, and uh, so, I don't know, I guess you could toy with it. Or could you, like throw a little chunk in a container and just seal it and just let it sit there for a long period of time? Like, wouldn't you eventually? I've seen Kato grow in a plastic bag uh, that was just sitting on somebody's desk for months. Well, the like, Kato won't die, but like, I want to kill the Aptasia, like the little baby Aptasia, as a, all the bristle mm. worms, all the fire worms, all that stuff. And I'm not confident if it's sitting in salt water that just like letting it sit on the shelf is gonna kill yeah. the little eggs and stuff. But anyway, months. Yeah, we had some success. The fridge, by the way, did not it melted totally overnight. So don't do that one. That one didn't work. Or, or I don't know. Try it. <laughs> Somebody here says, uh, "Dear Lord, you you stock algae bar and just buy a jar." <laughs> Well, the problem is, man, A, that there are, like, you guys are buying it all. It's always <laughs> out of stock. Like, perpetually, there's no algae at LG Barn. <laughs> uh, but uh, the other problem is, like, it turns out a 360-gallon tank needs more than a, you know, golf ball. Yeah. And, like, golf that's ball true. is, like, 40 bucks. Yeah, man. yeah. Like, so I need, like, a pineapple. You know, bigger maybe. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I might, I might have like that. Might be like three grand. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> I gotta find a different option. <laughs> uh, I don't know. For, to fill, I want to fill that thing up. If I want to actually reduce the, turn it on and reduce the uh, uh, nitrate and phosphate. Yeah, you're gonna. I can't do it with a golf amount. ball. I gotta yeah. get somewhere else. So that's true. Yeah, I definitely, obviously, algae barn, especially if you're just starting a tank out or yeah. a new refugium. But uh, hey, algae barn. Start growing it faster. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Kyle's with us too. Oh, uh, hey Kyle, thank you very much. Everybody's oh, man. telling him. I, I, I sent him a video today. Terrence t is telling him how he rocked this build. Everybody's saying he's knocked it out of the park. Great okay. stuff. Okay, Kyle, listen, right? <laughs> like the stuff that seed, anyone could have this in, yeah. in their house, right? This whole so thing. So Kyle was kind enough to work with me to, to build it, and actually he really read the show on most of it. But like, it, like, I gave him my desires and said, hey, this is what I want it to look like. This is where the things are going to go. And he made a lot of this just come to life, right? And so, so much of this, anyone could have in, in their house, as long as they have a fish room, I guess. Uh, or even we could make this stuff custom for going inside of like standard tanks and, mm. and like really bling it out, like bring life to the gear inside of the tanks. Uh, so, uh, Kyle, call me when we're done. Uh, we need to make this happen for people because yeah. uh, there's just no reason that like we can't make this kind of thing happen. Like some of the cooler parts, I wish I could figure out like the Neptune board there. If we if we go over to it, the the right here, yeah, the Neptune board. I mean, it's just a touchscreen monitor. We need to find a monitor that's like readily available forever and easy to mount in there. Yeah, it's like true. liquid nails in, in, inside of here, right? It's solid, yeah. yeah. So like, we just need to find a way, but like, it's, it's not like a miracle, you know? Like we can make this could happen you, for everyone. Could you accomplish the same thing with a touchscreen monitor in a window stick? Uh, probably, yeah, I mean, like, it's hard to say. I like, know. Uh, those window sticks are like so, uh, I think the, 
the one of the problems though is I think if you run them like all the time like that, and oh, they, they might overheat. Not made or, for that. You know, yeah. I don't know. I, it's possible though. Like those, those little USB things, you just slide right into a monitor or yeah, even just Windows. a TV actually. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You need touchscreen though. So yeah, I don't know. But yeah, Kyle, man, thank you very much. And uh, I don't know, man. I'll call you later. We'll we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about how to make this happen for other people because. Uh, when you see it, like, how do you not want that? Yep. You know, like that's the next, like this is the next evolution <laughs> of uh, of the hobby. I think I don't know. All right, so different testing. turn, different right, turn. So we test, start testing. So I'm about to walk out the door today to come to work, and he goes, "Wait, let's do a round of testing." And we got that new Hanna nitrate te or nitrate tester. Uh, let's 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 try these things out. Let's just see where everything is before we come back here. Okay, so two things you're going to hear today: our experience with the nitrate tester, yes, right, uh, or checker rather. Yep, checker. And then uh, we were going to test it against the the NIOS one that I was doing, which I, came out about four. To uh, like to just go ahead and and say it right up front, I broke it. There you well. I didn't I don't break know if it's, it. I don't know if it's fair, man. Yeah, maybe. I, fa I failed the test. I, I don't know if that's true, man. Well, we're, we're going to give you a, a raw experience with it anyway. Uh, but also, I'm going to give you experience with some things because I got a I got a master series a, a video mm -hmm. that's, that I'm currently writing about super saturation and maintaining higher levels of calcium and alkalinity, not just mm -hmm. like the science and theory portion of it, but the real life portion of it. Because that doesn't always match what uh, you know the science guys tell you. Yeah. So there's theory, there's stuff out there that is known science, everybody agrees on it, but how much of it actually applies to the tank? Because I think there's a lot of cases where it doesn't. Mm. So you're going to see that in just a second too, uh, like a little bit of insight in where that's going. Mm. Uh, and then uh, I got a, I got another question too that uh, this kind of brought up. So we'll, let's just start on the checker thing. So go to the checker little video here, or we don't have the video of the checker, but nope. so here's the deal. The checker, what I was hoping for is like the checker that you would get from like, uh, uh, I, I don't know, like the, the phosphate one or the, the alkalinity yeah, one. Not as easy as the alkalinity one because they said up front that in testing nitrate and is salt hard. water is, is extremely difficult. Yeah, there's gonna be at least one, if not two reagents. You know, I, I, the NIOS one I think mm -hmm. has, uh, Two reagents, yep, so I have powder. Yep. Yeah, the I think the like uh, the red, red sea has one three. has three. Yep. You know, and the red sea one takes a little extra, a little, mm -hmm. little more time. And if I had to, based on my experience, I'd say the red sea one was a little bit more accurate, especially at the low end, mm. if accuracy really matters to you in this case. So they take a while to do, but I gotta tell you, a lot of people like checkers. Like, yep. and it doesn't matter. I want a digital readout uh, on uh, and everything. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like, I, especially, I, I don't know, if you're like colorblind, dude, this is this is the option. Right? But you gotta be willing to go through the testing process that some of these harder to test for things might require. So I was kind of hoping it was just gonna be the reagent thing, but they took a totally different thing. And, I, and now after seeing it, I gotta take a different, you know, I gotta understand what it is they're doing. Yeah. So the, the, the three reagents. science they're doing here is totally different. Yeah, three reagents, a filter process. Uh, I'm gonna butcher this, but this is what I saw happen today. Is A, the instructions were very hard to follow. Yeah. B, you have to like assemble this little filter thing perfect. There's got a little O-ring in there and or a filter. You gotta mix uh, some uh, of your tank water with uh, this reagent, then it clouds up, and then you gotta like force it with a syringe through this filter pad, and then- That's as far as I got. Yeah, okay, well, so ours leaked. We tried to open up in the sink. The little filter ring fell out down the sink. Gasket. It was gone. Yeah. And, but by then we were like poking out our eyes anyway, because it was like <laughs> so much work, man. Like, uh, like, I don't know, man. Like, it's reading between one and five. Hmm. I'm like, I don't know, I mean, what level of accuracy do I need in here? Yeah, I wish I could have I mean, made it all the way through the test just I to kind of see too. the thing. <laughs> but by the time that my little filter was uh, leaking out the side, uh, and I went to go rinse it to try it again, and I lost the gasket. The test is done. I, I only there's only there was only one gasket, and I lost it. So I'm gonna tell you, in in all honesty, my frustration is like because we were learning it. Yeah. Right? I actually had to go watch their video because yep. the instructions didn't really. They were leaving some steps. Should out. put this in Thomas's yeah. hands, make him a master yeah. on it, and then tell him to give us a Ten clear video. A clear video. Yeah. Yes. So here's the thing. After I'd done it all, 
I bet you I could hone this thing down to 10 minutes and I could do it pretty quick, you know, do the thing, yeah, shake it, force it through there yeah. right, and do it in 10 minutes, no big deal, right? It's a lot more steps. So if you care about accuracy, mm. I'm curious if this thing will give a higher degree of accuracy because you're not reading it with the naked eye. Yeah. You're using a tool. Mm -hmm. uh, there must be some reason to uh, filter. Uh, I mean, they're almost certainly using something to precipitate out uh, probably the sodium or something mm -hmm. else in there uh, to get a more accurate reading. Because I know when I was going down this rabbit hole uh, with nitrate before, I, the sodium, I'm almost certain with sodium was the interference that oh. was with all the hawk stuff. Yeah. It was a giant pain in the buck. So they're probably getting rid of the sodium, is, it's my guess. Uh, which will increase the accuracy of the test kit. Well, it's a three-part. If you care, it's a three-part kit. So, and the reagents are reminiscent of like the Red Sea one, where there's like a silver. I think maybe silver nitrate or silver, uh, some kind of silver. The Part B one, uh, and I think they're filtering that out in their test. So I don't know. I'm just guessing here. But now let's look at the nitrate one or the NIOS one. Uh, you mix it up a couple of drops, shake it 10 seconds, mix it up with some powder, and then wait five minutes and do this. It's pretty easy. And the yellow shade yeah. versus pink shades is always easier for me to read. I could personally. actually read this really easy. And in fact, I could read this to one to the point where I could figure out it was actually four. It was in between these two numbers, between three and five. A little or heavier right? on, the four, on the five side. Yeah, I could actually figure it out. And like, here's the thing, I don't care three or five. <laughs> it means the same thing to me, uh, to be honest. You know, like I, I just need to be in a window that uh, I'm I'm safe with. So one to three, if that's the range you want to be in, three to five. Ask yourself how much you care. Uh, for me, I don't care. So I, I'm I'm probably once the system's up and running and things are stable and I'm actually looking for you know like control a really, this. Well, yeah, I mean, then I'm it probably looking for under five yeah. myself. Yeah. You guys can do whatever you want, but. For me, I'm probably looking for under five. Uh, and I'm gonna explain, uh, actually we got another master of your elements uh, being nitrate and phosphate coming yep. up soon. So I'm gonna give a more detailed thought in, into that as well. But like, I don't know that many people who are like, I need my nitrate to be 8.42. No. <laughs> for if, it, what? if it's anything for what? but 8.42, man, I'm done, I, I quit. I mean, you could, <laughs> you could do it too because there's uh, things that there's, products out there that you can actually dose very specific amounts and get it right to a specific level. But you have to have a test kit that can measure to the, that very specific level. I, I'll teach your own. I don't think there's gonna be a lot of benefit between, I, actually, I think there's a lot of uh, negativity chasing the nitrate dragon. Mm. Uh, trying to like, if you got five, like, oh no, I really was hoping for, you know, 2.4. Yeah. Know, like I better figure out how to get it down. And like, oh, it's, it's 1.8. 2.4, like more stuff, <laughs> you know, I, who, like, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't see the value. Yeah. Especially in a world now where like LG just isn't the same issue as it was when I entered the hobby. Mm. Uh, so like, the filtration methods uh, improved. Yeah, same thing with like phosphate, you know, like everybody's 0 0.03. You know, that, that, that one actually drives me absolutely bad. Mm. Like everybody's advice, like, you got 0 0.03, and if you have anything over that, I can't believe it, so you must stuff me be dying. Uh, no. no. You're more likely to grow algae, but I don't know anybody that was effectively maintaining 0 0.03, and most of the ones that thought they did, I brought over some other checkers, and they just found out theirs was off by 0 0.03, and they were using like GFO and stuff, and they were actually at zero. Zero. Yeah, yeah. and it was just that their, their, their checker was overreading it like a tiny, tiny, <laughs> tiny bit, right? Uh, so, I mean, how do you maintain that level of never zero, mm -hmm. but always just a little bit more? You can't when your Not testing right. apparatus or Wait, is you, outside of that range anyway. The worst part of that actually is the uh, like uh, internet shaming that comes with that. Oh, right? like, yeah. I can't believe you have point one. <laughs> you, know, you know, like you must be doing something wrong. Yeah. You know, like you should actually not say that it aloud again. <laughs> uh, like no man, it's like almost everybody if they're honest. <laughs> Parameter yeah, shaving. so I, I don't know. Like, I, well, we'll see. The calcium here. This was interesting too. So last time we did this, uh, uh, we had the same result, 440? which is for uh, no four ninety. Four ninety. Right. And it was surprisingly high, and I got I got a theory in, uh, as to why, and we'll see that in just a second. Uh, but. Also, the alkalinity. Can you bring the alkalinity up one from that was earlier? 8.8, which is higher than Tropic Marine Pro, or Tropic mm -hmm. Marin Pro. 
Yeah, I don't remember what it was but when we did this video last time. I bet you somebody who's paying attention out here would probably remember yeah, what it was. Yeah, from a couple weeks ago, a few weeks I think ago. it was around nine that time too. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the by the way, the magnesium is like close to 1,500. Uh, phosphate, you probably, I don't know if you got a shot of the phosphate. Phosphate was 0 0.26. Yeah, shame on me. Yeah, right? like gosh. How terrible, Go terrible reaper. Like, I haven't even put any food in yet. We'll put a water change. <laughs> Uh, and I think the magnesium was 1,500, and uh, nitrate, like you said, you tested at four. Okay, so the magnesium may be the reason that we're seeing this thing, but here's the thing, mm. is everybody out there will tell you, like if you go and read the actual science on supersaturated water and the appropriate levels of calcium and mm. alkalinity, there's like a, a balanced amount, meaning like, if you go past that, the like on and off rate of the like ions of calcium and alkalinity are like uh, like start to change and they're not they they start to precipitate out right. and like it just won't work. So like at a seven dKH and like three hundred and eighty parts per or million calcium is around a range that's like balanced mm. and you won't see any precipitation. But if you raise either one of these. In theory, oh, you should see precipitation. Like if I raise my alkalinity from seven to nine, now I have, I should have more precipitation. And the part of the problem with that is, yes, you should have more. I agree with the science, but how much more? And what does it really matter, mm -hmm. right? So here's the thing is, uh, uh, in this tank, it's had 490 calcium and uh, like a nine DKH for like a month. So, like listening to the science here, you shouldn't be able to do that stably. It should all just be falling out of a uh, uh, oh. solution and precipitating all over my heaters and it should be a terrible situation. I'm not dosing anything. Yeah, but nothing's and, really uptaking it either. And it's not it dropping. So, well, the science around supersaturation and maintaining mm. uh, the appropriate balanced amount of calcium and alkalinity and not going too high, otherwise you're gonna start uh, causing precipitation. Hmm. It's true, but to what degree? Yeah. You know, like, and how much does it matter? And like, there's salts out there that are, are selling their salt at 500 calcium and uh, 12 DKH. <laughs> I, I do know that in those cases, I've definitely seen, seen, uh, uh, seen the precipitation. Yeah. But I don't, uh, this one just kind of I mean, opens up Pandora's box. Essentially what you're doing here in your tank, because there's nothing in there, is just, this is like a large saltwater storage bin. And mm -hmm. with the Tropic Marins and some salts, like we found that just don't precipitate. They store indefinitely yeah. without changing uh, parameters. So I don't, the one, like I saw a bunch of people last time, you know, throw out some theories here as to why this is, but like, why is the calcium, alkalinity, magnesium so high, but the salinity is on? I, I, I don't mm. know. Actually, I don't think I fixed the salinity from the last And we time, didn't test actually. salinity today. I saw that. I'm, yeah, it's up I, just a little yeah. bit, uh, but not enough to explain the whole thing. Yeah. And so here's the thing. The pH is 7.8 in this tank for most of the time, mm -hmm. right? It's probably dissolving the rock slowly. And then it hit a point where the saturation stopped it from doing that. That makes sense. I don't Could know. Be. I, but I want to do this experiment, actually. So Ooh. I want to do the experiment of put rock, a bunch of dry rock, mm. into some tanks, maintain them at 7.8, and see if the alkalinity and calcium go up. Because if they do, like mm. they probably should, that is a terrible environment to house a coral <laughs> that has calcium carbonate skeleton. Well, it just feeds that conversation that we had a couple weeks ago, or in your in your master series too, about you know eight point three is the bar. Uh, that's where the, the bar ocean. of the ocean is. I mean, that's the bar. You and can see entire areas of the ocean wiped out when tenth, it goes below. Yeah, a tenth of a dKH point, and it's like starts to wipe out things. We are fluctuating in between like sometimes seven point six to eight point four. So that's like the, the part of the progress left on the table, right? Like, yeah, I know that we can keep a coral in 7.8 to 8.3. I know that that's possible, but I also know people have random mortalities all the time, right? And that's what they actually say about the ocean is, like when I go from 8.3 to 8.2 or 8.1, it's not like the whole thing dies. It just means that the whole thing is building a weak skeletal structure. Mm. It's super susceptible to temperature changes. It's already sick from the beginning. Changes. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's just that when a couple other things go wrong, <sighs> everything goes wrong. Sound familiar? Yeah. yeah because I've seen that happen in a lot, yeah, a lot of tanks. Times. Mysteriously, all kinds of stuff dies for no reason. 
you know, like, uh, I just like, they're all kind of like just hanging on the edge. So if we find that just putting the tank with 7.8 water and we just put a brand in new water and they just put the calcium carbonate sand and rock in there and it dissolves and increases calcium and alkalinity, that's enough for me. I'm done with that conversation. You could also measure the mass of the rock too, I guess, over a long enough timeline. So I don't think you need to measure. If yeah. if you add in calcium alkalinity, it's because it dissolved the skeletal structure. There's no, it didn't come from anywhere else. Yeah, it's not magical carbonate theory, <laughs> right? That's true. Yeah. All right. So here's a, the uh, one of the last slides. Here is the uh, free ammonia. So Says we're zero. now at 0 0.01 free ammonia, but we were pretty close to that the whole time. But yep. I can tell you now that the uh, Red Sea test kit you saw earlier says zero, ready for fish. So right after I'm done uh, calling uh, Kyle after this video, <laughs> uh, I, I'm actually going to call up uh, uh, marine collectors and Elliot and say, dude, it's time for fish. Maybe you'll ship them to me tomorrow. Ooh. I don't know. I, I think he was actually planning on today, but maybe you couldn't get a hold of me. Uh, yeah. I think we we're planning on doing it today, but uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe Friday. I gotta go to the airport though. Uh, and yeah. Pick them up. Sweet. He only ships to the airport. <laughs> Take care of the pets proper. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, I think that's, that's your cool. update. Can you go back? I want to see the, the the lights turn on again. The whole thing. Oh. Uh, I the, mean, this is the uh, we what we opened with. Yep. All right. There it is. Boom. Sump floor light. Sump light. Watch the sump go blue. Boom. Watch the walls kick on. Boom. I gotta get a proper light for Watch the ceiling. Watch the RO now. all go on. Boom. Here comes the display lights, Neptune, Ecotec, and dosing containers. And then the last one. There we go. Woo! I've got more to come too. This room is not finished. It's sweet. just like 85% of the way there, <laughs> right? All right, so we'll uh, see you next week. Is there anything we're going to point everybody at uh, if you uh, if you watch today's we video? We should talk about that. We should talk about that pH uh, thing that we were just talking about. P oh. Master your tank pH. There you go. Right here. I mean that it's geeky, but oh, it's you'll rewind it a few times because you'll pick up something. Uh, you'll understand pH in a way you never, never, ever thought you did oh, it. For sure. And like Dave here did some really awesome graphics. So finally, like he explains it in a way that I think almost ah, anybody can yeah. understand it. And like, I've been doing this wrong this whole time. Yep. There it is. Go check it check out. Check it out. And we'll see you next week.